Hey guys, I'm Kaya, and I'm a sucker for the classics. How to Kill isn't just limited to 80 slashers, and today we're gonna take a stab at one of horror's original icons, Dracula. To die, to be really dead, that must be glorious. Yeah, you say that, but you sure don't make it easy. Even Buffy couldn't slay the Transylvanian Terror, the best she could do was kick his missed ass out of Sunnydale. You think I don't watch your movies? You always come back. She gets a pass because she's frickin' Buffy. I'm standing right here. But you might have better luck if you follow our guide. So grab your garlic, clutch your crucifix, and find the nearest Van Helsing because you're about to learn how to kill Dracula. The Count was named after Vlad Dracula, a Romanian prince better known as Vlad the Impaler, whose favorite method of execution might have inspired Drac's greatest weakness, a stake through the heart. Dracula is most vulnerable when he's in his death sleep, a state of hibernation that restores his strength before night falls. It's the perfect opportunity for a quick staking, and it takes a lot to wake him up, so don't worry if you missed the first time. Uh, Dad, that's his crotch. Oh, in Bram Stoker's book, Dracula dies when our hero slashes his throat and plunge a bowie knife into his heart. That was a little too intense for 1931, which is why you don't see Bela Lugosi's body in Universal's iconic adaptation. The fateful moment occurs off screen. I would have liked killed to see that, pun included. <laughs> pun included. For every nerd video, you get a free pun. If I was at full Slayer power, I'd be punning right about now. Anyways. Later films wouldn't be so squeamish when it comes to staking, like in Andy Warhol's Dracula from 1974. This version of the Count can only survive on the blood of virgins, so he travels to Italy in search of fresh victims. This takes like the thirst is real to just like a whole new level. Unfortunately, most of the virgins he encounters have been fooling around with a socialist servant named Mario, who chops off Drax's arms, legs, and other parts before finishing him off with a classic blow. <laughs> it's almost as gory as Francis Ford Coppola's 1992 Dracula, which was advertised as sticking close to the source material. That wasn't really the case. They tacked on this love story between Drac and Winona Ryder and ludicrously dragged out his death. He gets sliced and stabbed like in the book, but then he turns into a demon and drags himself away. Winona follows, impales his heart again, then cuts off his head for good measure. That's a lot of effort to kill one vampire, even if he is Gary Oldman. I mean, it just seems easier to just wait for some sunshine. Like a lot of Dracula lore, the Count's fatal weakness to sunlight doesn't appear in Stoker's book. It has an effect, but it's not the instant KO that we know from the movies. That comes from the 1921 film Nosferatu. Now this isn't technically Dracula, but Bram Stoker's estate still sued the shit out of the studio and nearly every copy of the film was destroyed as a result. Thankfully, it survives to become a key influence in the birth of the horror genre. Can't say the same about Count Orlock though. As he's chowing down his final victim, he gets so distracted by the feeding frenzy, he forgets about the rising sun. As a rooster crows, he fades away with a whiff of smoke. It's not bad for 1921, but later films would have a lot more fun with Dracula in daylight, like the 1979 version starring Frank Langella. Dracula is basically the hero in this telling. He even kills Van Helsing with a stake intended for his own heart. But he meets his grisly end after our heroes stick him on a meat hook, Leatherface style, then hoist him above deck where he twists and burns in the sun. <laughs> Like Nosferatu 1972's Blackula, y'all couldn't come up with a less on the nose name? Get this, Dracula, but he's black. Get this, Blackula. I'm just like, the f Okay, back to this. 1972's Blackula doesn't officially star the Count either. The titular character is an 18th century African prince cursed by the Dark Lord himself. But we're including it because A, it's the first time a vampire was played by a black actor, William Marshall, who kills it with a dignified performance that was way ahead of its time. I could dispense with you now, Doctor, but I have a rather urgent appointment elsewhere. And B, it's got a great death scene, which is all I really need. Blackula runs outside after losing his love and melts into a disgusting, maggoty mess. It's 
It's a sick visual, but there are only so many ways you can expose Dracula to the sun before things can get convoluted, which is why some films stray from the established lore and add some vampiric variety. As a third film in the franchise, Blade Trinity finally delivered the dream match we've been waiting for. Ryan Reynolds versus Triple H. Thank you. We also get to see Blade battle Dracula, or Drake as he prefers to be called. I was born ready, motherfucker. Motherfucker. I like that. The vamp is so powerful, he can only be killed by a super virus called Daystar, which Blade administers with a deadly dose to the chest. In Van Helsing, which came out the same year, it takes a bite from Hugh Jackman's werewolf form to dissolve the Drac into a skeleton. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Dracula 2000, Gerard Butler does his best Scott Stapp impression as a leather-clad count, complete with a brand new origin. This Dracula is revealed to be Judas, the biblical betrayer of Jesus. As a result of his curse, he can only be killed by hanging, the same way his New Testament namesake died. So, as he's dangling from a building on Bourbon Street, he meets the sun with Wide open. Dracula 3000, no relation to 2000, takes us to where no count has gone before. He's been to Transylvania. Transylvania? Where the fuck is Transylvania? Brooklyn and Sesame Street, and now he's joining his horror brethren in outer space, where movies go to die. Despite a stellar performance from Coolio, Going somewhere, weedy boy? There's not much to recommend about this uber trashy movie. Unless you count Tiny Lister having sex with a pleasure droid as her ship blows up, killing Space Dracula along with them. It's an undignified end for one of the most elegant characters in all of fiction, which is why we need to finish on a more debonair Dracula. Next to Bella Lugosi, no one's contributed more to Dracula's mystique than the late, great Sir Christopher Lee. He starred and died in seven movies for legendary English horror studio, Hammer Films which exploited some more obscure vulnerabilities from the vampire mythos. This video is getting a little long in the tooth, so let's wrap things up with a lightning round. Stop, hemma time. In the horrors of Dracula, two candlesticks in the shape of a cross force Lee into the sunlight. Classic, but nothing groundbreaking. And the awesome melting skin effect was cut from the theatrical release and lost for decades. The sequel, Prince of Darkness, takes advantage of Vampire's inability to cross flowing water, drowning Drac in his own frozen moat. Two years later, the Count falls from his castle and gets impaled on a golden crucifix and Dracula has risen from the grave. Hammer continues a religious theme and tastes the blood of Dracula, where he crashes into a church and dissolves upon the altar. In Scars of Dracula, our hero's attempted staking misses his heart, but when he yanks out the metal spike, he gets struck by lightning and dies in a fiery blaze. Next, in Dracula AD, the Count gets sprayed with some holy water and knocked into a spiky pit. Van Helsing wins. Fatality. Finish him. The satanic rite of Dracula was Lee's last time wearing the cape, and his death stems from getting caught in a hawthorn bush. As the source of Jesus' crown of thorns, this rosy relative stops a vampire dead in its tracks, giving Van Helsing one last opportunity to plunge a fence post into his chest. <laughs> It's fitting that horror's greatest rivalry ended with a classic kill, but it wouldn't be the last time we heard from the Count. It's time to die. I'm pregnant. Dracula is one of horror's most enduring archetypes. He's been in everything from westerns to wacky Leslie Nielsen comedies, but he's far too dangerous to leave walking on Earth for long. Still, even if he managed to kill him, that might not be the end. As the Count says himself, There are far worse things waiting man than death. Thanks for watching, guys. This is our first classic how to kill, so let us know what older horror icons you want to see Six Feet Under. The Wolfman, The Invisible Man, Frankenstein's Monster. Leave a comment, let me know, and as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd.